Today, Rinpoche pointed out the basic fact that in all of our lifetimes, we've endured many types of suffering for the sake of nothing important. Why wouldn't we then endure the smallest amount of suffering in order to engage in Dharma practices which will lead to our eventual freedom? <laughs> So on page 410 in the Tibetan, corresponding English, the Nipatsaur Jawar. Okay. Okay, so and then we're at uh, number two. How compassion is, let me just find it, I'll give you the exact. What did the man do, Mara? Okay, um, so 166B is where we will begin today. Uh, page 166b, showing that compassion is appropriate. Anybody have any blank paper? Oh, cool. Perfect. Here, I, I get it. I got you. I got you. Oh, yeah, that's the same thing. I got you. I got you. I got you. I Sijent Dungasonje, <coughs> Okay, uh, so again, page 166b, uh, this is number two in the Tibetan, it says, um, Showing that compassion is appropriate, or the analysis of um, the compassion. Uh, so showing that compassion is appropriate. Contemplate from the depths of your heart. All living beings have been in cyclic existence since beginningless time, and there is not one who has not been my friend and relative, mother, father, etc. Uh, so when we analyze that all sentient beings, like ourselves, all sentient beings have um, um, been in cyclic existence or existed in cyclic existence since beginningless time. So there isn't any relationship they haven't had with us in the past um, because of this extensive, um, these extensive rebirths that we've had. Um, so everyone has had, every sentient being has had the relationship of our friend, relative, mother, father, etc. Uh, so we've had those relations with every single sentient being. And it says, being impermanent, they lose their lives and are miserable due to the three types of suffering. So, um, but um, since beginningless time, because of impermanence, 
sentient beings have lost their lives, have died and have been reborn, have died and been reborn. So since beginningless time, um, they have existed in cyclic existence, but because of impermanence, they have not, they didn't, haven't uh, stayed in one, inhabited one um, um, state of being. Um, they've inhabited many states of being, had many experiences in that uh, beginningless stream of rebirths. Um, so and it says uh, they lose their lives and are miserable due to the three types of suffering: the suffering of change, the pervasive compounded suffering, uh, and the suffering of suffering. So these are the three types of suffering that sentient beings endure. Um, crazed by the demon of the afflictions, they destroy their own welfare in this and future lives. I must generate compassion for them. How could it be right to get angry or to retaliate for harm? Dixon <laughs> Tobasola, Tabasola, Magawane, ne Jean Dato 
Okay, so then, um, so now we'll get into some divisions and some breakdown of those divisions. So uh, we've completed number two, showing that compassion is appropriate. And number, now we have a, another heading, major heading two. Um, so that was a smaller heading two. That's why they have choose to use AB, um, but in the Tibetan. Excuse me, it's always just straight numbers, so you just have to follow and know where you are in the outline in order to follow it. Um, so now, number two, major heading number two. Stopping impatience with those who prevent your praise, fame, or honor, and with those who have contempt for you or say offensive or unpleasant things to you. Stopping impatience with those who prevent your praise and so forth, and with those who have contempt for you and so forth, has two parts. One, stopping impatience with those who prevent three things, praise, fame, or honor. And number two, stopping impatience with those who do three things to you, uh, have contempt for you, or say offensive or unpleasant things to you. Uh, so number uh, one, stopping impatience with those who prevent three things, praise, fame, or honor. Um, has three parts. Uh, reflection on how praise and so forth lack excellent qualities. So when we look at praise itself, um, does it have the excellent qualities? And the um, position is that it does not. Uh, reflection on how praise and so forth have faults. Um, and number three, the need to delight in those who prevent praise and so forth. Uh, so a, a way of looking at um, those who prevent your praise as being positive. So uh, now number one, reflection on how praise and so forth lack good qualities. Uh, and Rinpoche read it straight through um, with very, uh, maybe one or two points made um, uh, right to the end. Reflection on how praise and so forth lack excellent qualities. When others praise you and spread your fame, it serves neither of two purposes for this life. It does not bring you long life, health, and the like, and for future lives it does not bring merit and so forth. So when we look at the excellent qualities that praise does or doesn't have, we look at the excellent qualities in relation to this life, and we see that it doesn't bring health, uh, it doesn't bring any uh, of the um, longevity or a long life to you. Uh, so in this life, it, uh, it, isn't, it doesn't have excellent qualities. And in future lives, it doesn't bring any kind of uh, those qualities just mentioned, nor uh, increase merit. Uh, so um, because of that, um, we say that it does not, it lacks excellent qualities, praise does. Therefore, do not get attached to fame and praise, but reproach yourself by thinking. My displeasure when my praise and fame are ruined is no different from when small children cry upon the collapse of their sandcastles, which lack any of the requisites for a dwelling. Uh, so a small child makes a sandcastle and cries when it's washed away, but it doesn't have excellent qualities. You can't dwell in it. Um, so when, uh, when I'm um, not praised or uh, when, I'm, when I'm my displeasure when my praise and fame are ruined, is the same as that. Um, so then we have a quote from Shanti Deva's Engaging in the Bodhisattva Deeds or the Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life. Uh, Praise, fame, and honor do not cause merit nor longevity, nor cause strength nor health, nor bring physical well-being. Once I understand my own welfare, what meaning is there for me and those? And also another quote from the same text. When their sand castles collapse, children cry in great distress. Likewise, my mind is childish when my praise and fame are ruined. My mind is childish when my praise and fame are ruined. So now we get into the faults. 
Kushin Jibatan, and you can summon my Bashan to this Jibatan. You attend Jenla, Chadu Jibatan, Jenga, or Tabayina, and you attend your can Chadu Jigres Gisha Wana, Nyamber said to us, Gisha Wakan Yanugre, said to Yan, eh? Said to Sane Tadala. In what about the new button? Is that cheers horse? You but the ball of Rimache, the net true cheek, gong and maybe cheek. The cheek somure, the dupa, let's go, the nipa, the nipa ne, dupa, the cheek, the sopa. Yenna Tobala soba, Saint Tema Imbala, Jun Carriosana, Tobala soba, Tema Imbala, in Jun Yores, Lassi, you want on. You see Jibat and I look at somebody to this. Lesser, and then you attention to the Tadu to this. Okay, Lesser, to the Junis. Tuche. Yeah. Okay, um, so number two, reflection on how praise and so forth have faults. So looking at the, um, we looked at the lack of excellent qualities, now we look at the actual faults that they have. It says, develop disgust for praise and so forth, thinking, praise, fame, and honor. Um, and I'm looking at the Tibetan, I think it's being honored, because um, uh, that word honor can sometimes mean um, virtue. Uh, so um, looking, at, it's... It, um, in the Tibetan, just and quickly looking at it, it looks like being honored. Um, so praise, fame, being honored, distract my mind with the meaningless, destroy my disenchantment with cyclic existence, make me jealous of those with good qualities, and spoil my virtuous qualities. So here it shows how um, these serve praise, fame, and being honored serve as a distraction um, and actually serve as an opponent to renunciation. So a desire to definitely emerge is harmed by um, this relationship, um, um, a negative relationship to praise, fame, and being honored. Uh, it says, distract my mind with the meaningless. Um, now as a translator's note, it's, it's speaking um, about someone who is... Um, not realize. So when a Buddha is praised, it doesn't harm the Buddha's mind because the Buddha's reaction isn't like our reaction. So just as a translator's note, I just want to make sure that that's clear within this. This is speaking of a person who isn't realized, um, who, who reacts b poorly to praise, fame, and being honored. Um, so just want to make that clear. Um, praise, fame, and honor distract my mind with the meaningless, destroy my disenchantment with cyclic existence. So not only does it serve as an opponent to my um, renunciation, but it actually fuels my jealousy um, with those who actually have excellent qualities and says, and then in turn spoils my virtuous activities. And then we have another quote from Shanti Deva's Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life, Engaging in Bodhisattva Deeds. It states, Praise and so forth distract me, destroy my disenchantment, promote my jealousy of those with good qualities, and destroy all that is good. Nipa <laughs> Songe dans Chabi Chiwan 
Kuyeji dan dönen la anne jubara döbe dönen la jubara döbe gongu ye sanjeje şelo tabo çoba yeni oynadı. Sane hin taba ne çoğa gaji çoğa gaji gavacı başladı gavacı başladı deyse daha ki dönsü ne sönce yumare kondiru var. Deyse daha ki dönsü ne ne şişe kanda nene ba tada da ne ne son do don a son şişe şumi na şumi şumi na da ne çoğa dönye la ne de kudi çimi gu kanda da ki çöşe ba tela da ne çeta çoğ da ne dönen Dönen cündüyla, dönen cündüyla, son cicinin şelayı, ne mutlu, gobay nişo ba, tela da ne çeta çoğ, şey zoğuz, o adı sonba tere de o sonba. Neyse. Dönçen yürü be. 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 Niye kulağım tadan kubul kabici kuruyor? Lesa. What did you not read? Wa? Lesa. Yeah. Okay. Now we move on to number three. So uh, one showing uh, how praise lacks excellent qualities. The next is showing how praise actually has faults, and then the next shows how we change our um, way of looking at those who don't praise us. Um, so here it is: the need to delight in those who prevent praise, and so forth. Uh, so um, we need to develop a joy based on the points that are made um, in, and a delight in, when, in those who keep praise from us. Um, yeah. Stop your anger and feel delight from the depths of your heart, thinking, in that case, damage to my praise, fame, gain, and honor protects me from going to the miserable realms. So in that case, based on the two points that have been made about the lacking good qualities and having these poor qualities, um, it says, in that case, um, any damage to my praise, fame, gain, and honor protects me from going to miserable realms, cuts the bonds of my th- attachment and the like, and, like the Buddha's blessings, blocks the door through which I am about to enter into suffering. Thinking like this, you should from the depths of your heart stop anger and feel happy meaning uh, delight in those who block your praise, block your fame, block your being honored. And then we have another quote from Shanti Deva's Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life, Engaging in the Bodhisattva Deeds. Um, sorry, t- for 20 years I s- looked at my book that said Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life, so it's hard to, even though the words are right there. Engaging in the Bodhisattva Deeds states, Therefore, are not those involved in destroying praise of me and the like engaged in protecting me from falling into miserable realms? I diligently seek freedom and do not need the bonds of gain and honor. How could I get angry with those who free me from bondage? I am about to descend into suffering, but like the Buddha's blessing, they are giving me an opportunity to avoid it. How could I be angry with them? Dignal. This one. Mm-hmm. What about the Jitad Neba? Yes, so soon she bala, Mazaba Gabala, Gabas. What tell what the judge of his Haji Jitim would do here? Neba Nebada, Trabada. What did the soon soon she bala? And the Mazaba Gabadala, Yaji was such a soon the Tamba de Songon Tamba de Senna. Le jemme bis saint de gazo le maris le sna zoro zo ne saint de zo ke waro da ne saint ne saint saint mig na ba shiba na na ba shiba na na ba shiba ji na ba shiba le ji na ba shiba i ji na ba shiba saint tu yo ma ba saint la sa saint da i don na shi zo de ji wa de saint se na wa de ma ba saint ne What the saint is about, what she was. Ne, she was not zoning the war. Send a legend, maybe, send a legend, maybe, and a mozo, Jenji, no bajawa, menulas. Send a legend, zoom, my image, zoom, 
Zo mai in sono tanto, non c'è un gosso, 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 Menebe, Lui è un grande uomo, The Gatsire is Jie. Jin to Jie. Okay. Uh, so now we have stopping and patience. Uh, so now we get to number letter B in the, um, English. Stopping and patience with those who do three things to you, have contempt for you, or say offensive or unpleasant things to you. So there, is, there will be four categories uh, in this section. Uh, good. Okay. Uh, so the first category will go all the way up to the Sharawa quote. Um, so, um, stopping impatience with those who do three things to you, have contempt for you, or say offensive or unpleasant things to you. Prevent your unhappiness thinking. Since the mind is not material, it cannot be directly harmed by others. Uh, um, so, when we look at mind and we look at body, uh, these two things are mutually exclusive. Mind, um, uh, body falls under the form, material falls under the form. Uh, form and consciousness are mutually exclusive. And when we look at the uh, mind uh, and awareness texts, we see a point made that mental consciousness, mind, awareness, or intelligence, all these things are mutually inclusive. They are synonymous, but they are mutually exclusive. All of those things are mutually exclusive with form. Um, so body, material things fall under uh, form. So when we look at Um, consciousness, uh, there are six types of consciousness, eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, tactile consciousness, and mental consciousness. Um, so these six different types of consciousness are, are never inclusive with form. Uh, so uh, that's the point that's made um, uh, there, and it says, Prevent your unhappiness thinking, since the mind is not material, it cannot be directly harmed by others. While the mind is indirectly harmed by while the mind is indirectly harmed by directly harming the body, the body cannot be harmed by contempt, offensive speech, and unpleasant words. These harm ni neither body nor mind, so I should be delighted when you prevent your unhappiness, you do not give rise to hostility. Thus engaging in the Bodhisattva deed says, Since the mind is not physical, no one can destroy it. It is strongly attached to the body, and so it is harmed by physical suffering. Um, contempt, offensive speech, and unpleasant words do not harm the body. Then why, mind, are you so angry? So it's giving the possibilities, if, and it's saying that um, the mind can't be harmed by, by these physical things, um, so, but the mind can react to a physical harm. But when we look at physical harm, None of these things, in terms of un offensive speech or unpleasant words or any of these, actually can physically harm us. Um, so we can't say, oh, these harsh words that were being said to us, um, our mind is reacting to because it's hurting our body in some way, because it's not hurting our body in any way. And these words can't harm our mind. It's not possible. Um, so they, in reality, because the consciousness can't be harmed, uh, um, can't be negated, Um, or taken away um, um, because of its mutual exclusion with the form, um, 
there really isn't any harm that's being done. So the question's being raised, uh, why is the mind disturbed then? What, what's the disturbance for? Um, if it's, there's no physical harm taking place and what the person's saying can't really hurt your mind, uh, so what, what's the problem? Is the, what's the point that's being made? What is the problem? What is the, the harm that's being done here? And then we have a, um, uh, hold on, while the mind is indirectly, uh, let's see, those harm neither mind. When you prevent your unhappiness, you do not give rise to hostility. Thus, engaging in the Bodhisattva deed says, Since the mind is not physical, no one can ever destroy it. It is strongly attached to the body, so it is harmed by physical suffering. So Shantideva is saying, yes, it, it, the mind is harmed when there is physical suffering taking place, but this isn't one of those cases. Uh, so it says, Contempt, offensive speech, and unpleasant words don't harm the body. Then why, mind, are you so angry? So what is, what is the problem? Basically, Dison, Tambotsa, Sharawa, Lesso. Sharawa, the raw. Lesso. Shara is in a Kanumba, Tosuba, Trobas no last, Kadamagation is more general. Lesso. Ne Kanumba, Tambaji, Tosuba, Nibaji, Troba, Somba, Sola, Nedo, Jetan Suyan, Sadule, Pamata, Chi, maybe, Dojons, Tajenda, go to about now, Telege, Kazishuba, Yinaya. Sadul Labanaji and then Chibaba and the same Debuchons Devajon Shema Las Traba in Jero Shema Yakonsabe and the Jenda Glava to Andrew Yedo in Jerota Yakonsabe Maduashons on Badas and the Jenda Glava to Yedu with the Sand Maduashons Shuatan Yedula. And the me my my doshebe my Ne Lami Maji Malashevis, Kajashi had Malishi or Majin Solishi. Malashevale, one hour, lesser. Tishi from bear, lesser. Then a Tama, ah, Jetu Bichi, choose from what the Tama do, what the Tama never do good morning, is that lesser? What about the Nibats? Nibats are. Okay, so now number two. Uh, we have Sharawa said, no matter what the three Geshe's, and these are the three um, um, old Kadampa masters here, uh, Geshe's Kanlumpa, Nusua, and Drapa heard, it was no different from speaking to dirt and rocks, so they remained happy. Since everyone nowadays reacts quickly to what is said, they become unhappy. So these three Kadampa masters recognize the potency was the same as a dirt or rock can't harm, neither can these words. Um, when somebody whispered to Shindun, uh, as a monk, he said this and then that. Shindun replied, people also say things behind the king's back. You have committed divisive speech, so confess it. So um, this whispering and talking about people committing divisive speech, uh, um, uh, talking behind the king's back is actually divisive speech, wanting the person this is a translator's note, wanting the person who's hearing it to be divided from the person they're hearing that about, what they're hearing it about. So saying these people are talking behind the king's back, wanting the recipient of that information to divide from those people, just as the notes. Um, that's what divisive speech means. You're dividing people who would normally be attracted to each other in a, in a magnet kind of attractive uh, when someone said to the yogi, Ashera Rupi Dorje, people are talking about us and saying that our attendants are too lax, he replied, well, people will, uh, well, the people 
sorry. Well, the talk of the people will be about people. What else would they talk about? Thereafter, that person completely stopped the spread of his divisive speech, seeing he was again speaking divisively. Uh, he then saw this as an antidote um, and stopped his divisive speech. So this is number uh, where number two ends. Then eh? That's not what they did. Okay. Okay. Sombatsar. Sombatsar. Okay. Me it's not but Nama the data. Yeah. Okay. Um so now number three has this first point. Objection. When someone has contempt for me, etc. So there's a debate that's gonna take place. Uh, um and then um an objection and then a clarification. Objection and clarification. Objection. When someone has contempt for me, etc., other people will not like me. So this is why I'm unhappy about it. Reply. This would have some truth if others' dislike were to harm you. However, since their dislike does nothing to you, give up your unhappiness about others' contempt. Engaging in the Bodhisattva deed says, Others' dislike for me does not devour me in this or in other lives. Why am I adverse to it? So it can't hurt me. Others, people not liking me can't take my life, can't devour me, can't ruin me. Why, why in this life or in future lives, why do I give it so much power? She so then meet da. So, my guy is Dalla, my name is John. Tell her dinner to Dalla, near about to be Pachisha, be near about them, Hamba Dom, many about more or true in your nose, so much you go to her. Near about two John, near about two by in there. And then Never Chebamea Chebachia Mabajino. Let's say. Tetras on la, Tetras on la Nyagul Nyagurla Sula Imadua Majute Jenji Mururani Chebachendo Chebachendo Rubala Tene maybe Madrujan. Idua Mudubisha Ros Ido 
Ito Okay, so I'm um, just saying to Rinpoche that when last week we put the um, outline together, just to where we thought it was supposed to be, it was, was right, was correct. Um, so number three uh, ends um, where I just read to the, fir- the Shantideva quote, Others dislike for me does not devour me in this or other lives. Why am I adverse to it? Now, number four is the rest of it, as said before. Um, and not there's very little commentary that was given. So, objection. Indeed, I am not harmed by their dislike, but in dependence on it, I may be hindered in acquiring things from them. So I will get angry at those who have contempt for me, scorn me, or say unpleasant thing, words to me. And then the response to that is, even if you acquire things, you must leave them here, whereas the sin of your anger at them will follow you. Hence of the two choices, dying quickly in destitution or living for a long time improperly, the former is better. Um, So just as a note, the point is that if you're living a long time badly, um, it would be better to live a short time not badly. Um, um, So it's just a point is being made uh, here. Um, about that. Um, Even if you acquire things and live for a long time, you must die since you are not liberated from death. At the time of death, it is the same whether you have enjoyed pleasure from the previous hundred years or enjoyed it for merely one year. For both alternatives are nothing more than mere objects of memory, and at that time it makes no difference at all for your happiness or suffering. It is analogous to how in a dream the experience of pleasure for one hundred years and the experience of a mere moment's pleasure have no difference at all with respect to your happiness or else unhappiness at the time of waking. When you contemplate in this way and turn away from attachment and to gain an honor, you will not become unhappy with unpleasant words and contempt. You have no interest in being special in the eyes of others, so you do not lose your contentment, thus engaging in the bodhisattva deed states. Um, so you, n- you no longer um, seek uh, this praise of others, you kn- um, so you're content. Um, you have no interest in being special in the eyes of others, so you do not lose your contentment, uh, no matter what others are doing around you. Then uh, where does this information come from? Um, it comes from the Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life, Engaging in the Bodhisattva's Deeds by Shanti Deva, and it states, While I do not like contempt and so forth because they interfere with my prosperity, I leave my acquisitions here, but firmly keep my sins. When I die, I don't bring the things I've acquired materially with me. They stay here. The things that go on with me are my behaviors, my anger, uh, my virtue and non-virtue. Those are the things I bring with me. My material things are left behind. Better that I die today than live a long improper life. Like those, those like me might live a long time, but then there is only the suffering of death. Someone might awake from a dream after experience happiness for 100 years. Having a dream, you had happiness for 100 years. Another might wake from a dream after experience happiness for a mere moment. For both persons, once they awaken, happiness does not return. It is like this at the time of death. Whether your life was long or short, after acquiring many things, I may enjoy pleasure for a long time, but just like when, just like one robbed by a thief, I will leave naked and empty-handed. Jason. 
Okay, so I'm just going to read uh, Rinpoche just read straight through. Um, so I'm going to just do that, um, and then we'll see if there's any commentary. There wasn't any at that point, uh, I don't believe. Uh, st- uh, right at the beginning there was. Stopping both dislike for harm doers' attainments and delight in their troubles. So uh, when someone who is a, uh, um, our enemy, uh, be- for instance, gets rich, uh, we need to stop our dislike for things like that happening. And uh, we need to stop delighting in when they have troubles, when people we don't like have troubles. So we need to stop um, disliking their attainments and we need to stop delighting in their troubles. Uh, So this is the point uh, that's made here. 
uh, contemplate as follows. After I have generated the spirit of enlightenment for the sake of accomplishing all living beings' benefit and happiness, I get angry at harm doers when they obtain happiness on their own. After I have said that I want all beings to become Buddhas, I get unhappy when harm doers get even minimal prosperity or honor. This is extremely contradictory. You must eliminate your jealousy regarding any sort <coughs> of attainment by other persons and delight in it from the depths of your heart. Otherwise, your spirit of enlightenment and the achievement of the welfare and happiness of beings is not, nothing but words. Engaging in the Bodhisattva deeds says, Shantideva, since you want all beings to be happy, you have generated the spirit of enlightenment. Then when beings find happiness themselves, why do you get angry with them? If you wish to attain for living beings' welfare, Buddhahood, which is worshipped in the three worlds, why are you tormented when you see their most paltry gain or honor? When a relative finds sustenance for those whom you should nurture, objects of your care and generosity, instead of being pleased, are you angry again? If you do not wish even that for beings, how can you wish them enlightenment? Where is the spirit of enlightenment in someone who gets angry at others' attainments? Whether your enemy gets something from someone or it remains in the benefactor's house, it's never yours, so why be angry whether it is given or not? Even your mere malicious thoughts that delight in your enemy's troubles or that wish for your, their destruction do not harm your enemy. They lead only to your own suffering. Yet if such malice were to harm them, you should stop it completely, oh. reflecting on the drawback that this would bring ruin to yourself and others. Engaging in the Bodhisattva deed states, When my enemies are unhappy, what am I pleased about? My wishes alone will cause them no harm. Even if I should affect their suffering with my wish, what could I be pleased about? If I say I will be satisfied, what could be more ruinous? Once I am caught by the terrible sharp hook cast by the fishermen, my afflictions, I shall surely be cooked by the hell guardians in a kettle for the beings of hell to eat. Dixon. Sheso. Sheso. Rather, Rangi, yes, is in the B, Gisheba. In the Rather Rangi, Pinjala Soba to Suki Gisheba, Mendebe Shudu Bata, Rangi Jai, Person, Sobala Tajito, Mendebe Nabate Naha, Tele, Yimedo Achilasa, or the Nasan Tabayna or the Sel Majiba Yungres, Yimedo Achila, Yimedo Persona. And the Shedan Jay no longer is Shedan Yamba Shedan Jay Tajito Magawa Luna Emadu Tajito Magawa Luzuna and the Emadu at Ganagres De Luna Shedan Majivis Emadu at Mayuna and the Kondo Chagumares Shedan Majivis Can't name be Rivana Jay Tadala Tajito Magawi Naba Dola Good to man, eh? Control a garbage at this. And there's a bit of a type of going over there. Control the garbage at there. That's so. Near me, she to teach her control on by Yena. And the name Jun Chibores, near me, she sent to teach her was. She don't have a deeper mess over there. Deeper non teach you control the injury. She to teach her all. Gubi Danga Danga Jan Hadembe Jesse Naji Riba Rangi Numobata Gelenshine Kanado Lode Dai Dai to Kondo Jumba Shibi Tundada Yimbis or the Kondo Kayagi Nesu to want to say the Ores Raja Ores Shebala Tundada Yimbe Susu to be Shero Chis Labor chain, eh? Rebe go to mana cana. Country in our century, Ritoma. Country in our century, country moment, John of the Kennegres. Country the case on the Zoba de Apiongres. Zoba go to mana jailers. Zoba go to mana jailers. Young Tabby Longi, twenty mamma, maybe, Rebe. Young Tabby Young Tabby Longi, twenty what the drama may be, Rebe. Je sais, 
Chibi, you want him be Pachashi to Temba, you know, Pachatem Jan Gris. Well, sir. to be sure of Jay, Jay won't do another. So to be sure of Jay won't do another. The last will be Shansen to Shiba Lord Chibo Tanji do a yimbe. Tedan Jena Jena Jay, Tayu and Hibble. Okay, so now um, read on. You will be unhappy if you view as absolutely undesirable the objects to what you and your friends want. Movement in directions you do not want and the prosperity of your enemies. If this unhappiness increases, you become hostile. If you stop your absolute dislike of these three things, you prevent unhappiness. Once you do this, you will not feel hostile. Thus, dispel your absolute dislike of these things by using the reasonings previously taught. Take many approaches to stop your anger because it is a very great fault. These instructions, the lines of reasoning of the conquerors and their children presented above, provide the techniques for defeating your greatest enemy, anger. They involve arguing with your own afflictions and looking within yourself. When you analyze well with discerning wisdom and stop anger with many lines of reasoning, you prevent many types of anger and you become patient in many ways. Since this is an experience engendered by penetrating understanding that uses flawless reasoning to get at the meaning of correct scriptures, it leaves an extremely stable, latent propensity. So when one engages in this analysis uh, and engages in this reasoning to come to the conclusion that uh, anger is negative, patience is excellent qualities and why, this analysis itself um, is of great benefit. Um, um, it says... Um, and, and leaves very, very strong imprints within your mental continuum. So it says, since this is an experience engendered by penetrating understanding that uses flawless reasoning to get at the meaning of correct scriptures, it leaves an extremely stable latent propensity. So that's an imprint within your mental continuum, which will later ripen into uh, wisdom. Um, those who reject meditative analysis with discerning wisdom are those who reject the whole of the great undertaking of bodhisattva deeds such as these. Understand that such a rejection is the worst hindrance to using a life of leisure for the benefit of yourself and others. Get rid of it as you would poison. So here's a rejection of the Hashan view um, that where um, uh, any kind of cognition is negative according to Master Hashan and there is an emptying of the mind that needed to take place. Meditative analysis was non-virtuous according to Hashan. So this negates that idea that analysis is corrupt in some way. Deesong Rimche. <laughs> Never <laughs> The land to Chisheba, she mena, Maruntes, ne Tata Maina, Tail Hatus of Sombatar Yana, ne Shedan Chela, Yana, Langombala, Langombala, Sushi, Sombatine, Gola, you, Bato Chubanju, Shero, Shero, Taya. Tea 
Okay. The reason you must uh, definitely accept, I'm sorry, back up a little bit. Um, number two, uh, developing the patience of accepting suffering. Um, so when we go through the varying categories of um, patience, there were uh, three major categories of patience. Developing the patience of disregarding harm to you done to you, developing the patience of accepting suffering, and then developing the patience of certitude about the teachings. Uh, so this is number two, um, developing the patience of accepting suffering. And then there are three parts to this. First, the reason you must definitely accept suffering. Two, the way to develop acceptance. And three, a detailed explanation from the viewpoint of the basis. Um, the reason you must definitely accept suffering. Um, and just as a translator's note, when it says basis, uh, and this kind of word is used, it usually means like um, the kind of being, like basis, um, uh, when they ask, for instance, what is the basis for a bodhisattva um, uh, vow, um, then they would say, are there gods, are a basis, is a human, is a basis. So basis usually means the kind of person uh, in this context usually. We'll see, but that's usually when this word basis is used, it means the kind of being. Um, the reason you must definitely accept suffering, so accepting suffering. The causes of uh, engaging in the bodhisattva deed states, the causes of happiness sometimes occur, whereas the causes of suffering occur frequently. Um, so the causes of, un of happiness are few, the causes of suffering are many. Um, I've seen it written like that before. As you continually experience whatever suffering is appropriate to you, you absolutely must know how to bring it into the path. Otherwise, as the compendium of training says, you either generate hostility or you become discouraged about cultivating the path, either circumstance interfering with applying yourself to virtue. Um, so um, if one does not know how to bring this into a path, discouragement, um, is likely to happen, and when discouragement happens, uh, then you um, may not cultivate the path. You may not engage in more practice of virtue. Um, so, moreover, some sufferings will be caused by others, and some will be produced by your former karma, whether you or not you strive at the path. So whether or not you strive at the path, these things will occur. Some, as will be explained below, occur when you engage in virtuous activity, but do not occur when you are not so engaged. For the time being, you cannot dispel the sufferings definitely produced by the power of former karma and uh, immediate conditions. You must accept them when they arise, because one, if you do not do this, in addition to the basic suffering, you have the suffering of worry that is produced by your own thoughts, and then the suffering becomes very difficult for you to bear. Um, so the worry is coupled with this suffering. And then number two, if you accept the suffering, you let the basic 
If you accept the suffering, you let the basic suffering be and do not stop it, but you never have the suffering of worry that creates discontentment when you focus on the basic sufferings. And since you are using a method to bring even basic sufferings into the path, you greatly lessen your suffering so you can bear it. Therefore, it is very crucial that you generate the patience that accepts suffering. Um, so Rinpoche, and as a final point, stated that it's similar to when you... Um, have an injection from a needle. Uh, you know that something is coming from that injection that is of benefit. Um, so you undergo the suffering of that prick of the needle um, um, in order to uh, achieve whatever the goal of it is. Um, so likewise, um, accepting the suffering because of recognizing the benefit of accepting the suffering, recognizing the downfall of reacting negatively, uh, and so forth. So, um, uh, and it says again, if you do not do this, in addition to the basic suffering, you have the suffering of worry that is produced by your own thoughts, and then the suffering comes very difficult to bear. So the suffering compounds by what's called improper mental conduct, by improperly defining the um, subject uh, and giving it false um, um, giving it false qualities. Indeed, some Rinpoche said suffering. Then you but don't get down to language with you. There are more. Don't get down to language with you. Send such a that the Jeep taught the law. Don't get down to the number Jeep taught the law. Ne. Don't get down to the law. Touch it to Magawa. Zimba Gaba, Tambuji. Don't get down to the number. You but never knew about it. That Tambu. Dunga Dunga Tramashin to Zogala, Zurichona, Dunga Chamo, Saint Nubish de Shunju in Barakede, Jesu Yanana, Tela Maga Chishi, Kedu Jesu Menana, Tela Magashi Chippin, She Danza, Chadron Chatan, Lonzo Dan, Nanda Chin Dan, Dizula. Dag is the majate. Tatashina, never be she sauce. What about to do not on language over chicken taught the marvel taught? Do not not touch it to Mago and Zeba Gabata, Tanto Lambala, Lama Yuba Temba Niche, Tatambo, do not touch it to Mago, Zeba Gabata Reva, Tambo, do not show on, choose and do none. Uh, ただしな、ナバフェサ。サイドゥンガトライドゥンガトワトソレネサルチ。サルチャンベチェバイナテネ、ナバトフェオレス。シェソス。トムトカレジュナ。で、スシマインビエシェ。で、ダンドラポド
So there is no need for an effectiveness to, or an effectiveness to, your displeasure. There is even a disadvantage. If you are very impatient, a single suffering is extremely difficult to bear. Whereas if you minimize your impatience, you can endure great suffering. Engaging in the Bodhisattva deeds says. So this is perspective in relation to uh, the situation. If there is a remedy... This is from Engaging in the Bodhisattva Deeds by Shanti Deva. If there is a remedy, why be displeased? If there is no remedy, what is the use of being displeased? So this displeasure doesn't change it. If there's not a remedy, there's not a remedy. Um, all this displeasure does is makes it harder uh, mentally, um, improper mental conduct. Um, and also, I shall not be impatient with heat, cold, wind, rain, illness, bondage, beatings, and so on. If I am, the harm increases. Uh, so if my impatience around these things is present, then their harm to me is, is more because my, of my mind state around it, my mental state in relationship to it. Digsung. Nipa. Dungan Sajisu。他懂不懂啊？我跟你说，上班的啦，我来做，就是不是，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，我，
Um, and then Rinpoche completed through. Uh, the good quality of dispelling arrogance. This is because when suffering strikes you, it reduces your sense of superiority. So when you suffer, you don't think you're as um, superior as you did prior to that suffering. The good quality of causing you to uh, shun sin or to dispel non-virtue. This is because when you experience very painful feelings, they arise from non-virtue. So if you do not want these effects, you must avoid their causes. Um, so this, uh, uh, by experiencing suffering, um, it allows you to then s analyze what that suffering is caused by. And when one recognizes that it's caused by non-virtue, that suffering then causes you to abandon non-virtue. Um, so it's the next excellent quality. The fourth is the good quality of causing you to to like cultivating virtue. So it's not just the causes you to cultivate it, it causes you to enjoy or to um, be joyful while cultivating it. This is because when you are tormented with suffering, you desire happiness. And once you want it, you must cultivate the virtue that causes it. So recognizing that you want happiness, um, you become joyful in cultivating virtue because you know it causes what you want. Um, and then, five, the good quality of producing compassion for those who wander in cyclic existence. This is because after you have assessed your own situation, you think others, other beings suffer like this. From these five and what they indicate, recognize other good qualities on your own and then repeatedly train your mind to think, this suffering is a condition that I want. So when one recognizes that this suffering um, that he or she is enduring is endured by all sentient beings, it then causes one to develop compassion. So once you generate the understanding of your own suffering, then this intense understanding 
is coupled with the understanding that others experience this same exact thing and that motivates you to want them to be free from it and that's compassion. Um, so then it says, uh, once you um, repeatedly, uh, from these five and what they indicate, recognize other good qualities on your own and then repeatedly train your mind to think, the suffering is a condition that I want. Engaging in the Bodhisattva D says, since without suffering there is no determination to be free, you, mind, stay fixed. Um, so recognizing that one can't become a Buddha without suffering because one can't become enlightened without renunciation, without a determination to definitely emerge from cyclic existence. Suffering is a quality that causes one to want to emerge. Uh, so without it, there wouldn't be this desire to emerge. Um, and also, furthermore, the good qualities of suffering are that you dispel arrogance with disenchantment, develop compassion for the beings of cyclic existence, carefully avoid sin, and delight in virtue. And as a note, it's why it's so difficult to develop renunciation in other higher realms, God's realms and so forth, because the suffering isn't present, so that desire to emerge isn't as strong. Deesan Ramache. Dungaji she Dungeon Ranger, Okay, I, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so now uh, we move on to reflect on the advantages of bearing sufferings, hardships. So, 
Uh, the, we went over the good qualities of suffering itself, and now we go over the excellent qualities of actually bearing the suffering, enduring the suffering. Uh, so the first, reflecting on, there are two parts, uh, reflecting on the crucial benefits such as liberation, etc., and then reflecting on the benefit of dispelling immeasurable suffering. So uh, reflecting on the crucial benefits such as liberation. So um, if one bears suffering's hardships, um, then one and uh, one practices patience, then one is engaging in a pathway which leads to a liberation. There are various types of liberation. There's a, a, uh, it's not an actual liberation, but one could say liberation from the lower realms of cyclic existence. But actual liberation begins at the uh, liberation where the afflictive obstructions have been abandoned. Uh, this is a lesser vehicle liberation. And then there is a liberation where the obstruct, not only afflictive obstructions are removed, but the obstructions to omniscience are also removed. And this is a actual Buddhahood, uh, the omniscience. This is the um, complete liberation. So uh, this word liberation can mean various things, depending on what the context is. Um, the lesser, the, the lower nirvana, an individual liberation where one is in nirvana for oneself alone is in a, a liberation where the afflictive obstructions have been abandoned. And then the Buddhahood requires the abandonment of the obstructions to omniscience. Um, so there are these different types of liberation. Um, and, <coughs> hold on one second. And when we <coughs> look at the three types of suffering, the suffering of suffering, the suffering of change, and pervasive compounded suffering. Uh, it says the second, reflecting on the benefit of dispelling immeasurable suffering um, by, in, by bearing suffering's hardship one is able to d dispel immeasurable future suffering. So uh, the various sufferings are the suffering of suffering, the suffering of change, and the pervasive compounded suffering. Suffering of suffering being a headache, for instance. Suffering of change, contaminated happiness that turns into suffering, starts as happiness. Because it's not pure, it transforms into suffering. And then pervasive compounded suffering, which means uh, the appropriated aggregates, the, the contaminated aggregates that we take on, that are appropriated, that are f we're thrust into, meaning appropriated meaning that we're forced into these aggregates. Um, and just like a tree um, can be completely removed by burning it down, um, we can look to what the causes of suffering is, or the sufferings are, and if we apply something similar to the fire, which it completely eliminates, then what those things cause cannot arise. Uh, so when we look at the various types of suffering, we look at that third type of suffering, the suffering of the five appropriated aggregates. Um, we look at how this occurs again and again, and we see that at the root of this experience is the grasping at phenomena as being truly established. By grasping at phenomena as being truly established, we then create afflictions, which then create karma, which then creates cyclic existence. Um, so, um, which then, if we have cyclic existence, we have all of the contaminated experiences therein, uh, depending on the realm of choice, or not choice, rather, the realm of not choice. Um, it's actually literally said, um, the realm that we're, we're not independent. Uh, so this appropriation is forced. So when we say five appropriated aggregates, we don't have independence upon, we're forced into these. So this process can be stopped by getting rid of this grasping at true establishment. So the way that one gets rid of grasping at true establishment is by establishing the correct view by establishing the correct view that things are not truly established, that things are empty because of dependent origination. So when we apply the, uh, the fact of dependent origination, then we come to the conclusion that things are not truly established because of this interdependence, because they dependently originates. That negates, then, grasping at things as being truly established, 
And then by negating that, it begins to undo all that is created and experienced as a result of this mistaken apprehension. So this misapprehension causes all of these experiences, the reversal of the misapprehension, which is the correct view, then takes apart all of these other things and then uh, they no longer can occur because that which propels one into these aggregates is no longer there. So the force, the lack of independence is taken away um, because there's no forcing factor there left. Um, so... Um, so because, um, so the point is, is that um, the subject, the five appropriated aggregates can be gotten rid of because their causes can be gotten rid of. So because if something's causes can be gotten rid of, then they can be gotten rid of because if a cause is removed, then the result can't occur because its cause is removed. So the subject, the five appropriated aggregates can be gotten rid of um, um, or this experience can be done away with because what causes it can be done away with. So if you are to see uh, dependent origination, so if you see that things are not truly established by the reason of dependent origination, you see the Buddha, you see the Dharma, you see the Sangha, you see the three jewels. So how does go so how does this occur? How how does this happen? By contemplating again and again on the lack of true establishment of things because of dependent origination, one can traverse the various um, pathways from um, accumulation and preparation to the uh, superior pathways of seeing meditation and no more learning by again and again contemplating this. Uh, so this is... Uh, so, uh, we look at, in s the Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge, we see that mantra that's embedded within there, Teata Om Gate Gate Para Gate Parasangate Bodhisoha. That refers to, or implicitly refers to, the five paths. The path of accumulation, the path of preparation, the path of seeing, the path of meditation, and the path of no more learning. So, when one uh, sees this dependent origination and one begins to traverse these paths, so the first, Teata Om Gate, refers refers to the path of accumulation. Uh, the second gate refers to the path of preparation. Paragate refers to the path of seeing. Parasangati refers to the path of meditation. And Bodhisoha refers to the path of no more learning. So those refer to the Dharma. So one sees dependent origination, one traverses those five paths, one sees the Dharma. And when one traverses those, uh, engages in this uh, practice, one, once one reaches the path of seeing, uh, paragate in the mantra, te, gate gate paragate, um, one becomes a superior. And from that point on, one is sangha. Uh, one is a superior, uh, sangha um, the, is a sangha jewel. So the, the line of demarcation between uh, sangha and not sangha is if the practitioner has seen emptiness or not. Um, if he or she has reached the path of seeing, then he or she is sangha. Uh, so we see the the Dharma, the, the the Sangha. So we see the Buddha, we see the Dharma, we see the Sangha. So this is uh, what we state. We say that there are these liberations. Uh, um, what would a scientist say? We, it would be interesting to know what a scientist would say. So doubts, uh, there's a need for further analysis there. So 
Tabala Surutin, Jimmy, there's some button, Tombone, Dang Hong Kua, Quakuite, Qual Cubitis, Dang Hong Kua Cubitus, Joe Toma Yabatus, or dead, later than daughter, ah. Joe Toma Meba, Joe Toma Yoma, Sigin, Sigin Sundigina, Joe Toma Meba is Sigin Sundigina, Joe Toma Meba there, and then also Mamashi Gumudo, Mago Trill, then Ahuno. Okay, so now uh, reflecting on the advantages of bearing suffering's hardships, we see two categories, reflecting on the crucial benefits such as liberation, etc., and number two, reflecting on the benefit of dispelling immeasurable suffering. Uh, so first category, reflecting on the crucial benefits such as liberation, etc. Repeatedly make your mind steadfast, thinking, I know that in the past, while passing through cyclic existence, I suffered for the sake of trifling desires and minor needs, Yes, I disregarded the many sufferings, undergoing a great deal of purposeless suffering that will in turn cause immeasurable suffering for me in my future lives. Um, so, since beginningless time, um, uh, it says, I have suffered for, uh, I know that in the past, while passing through cyclic existence. So, we have had rebirths since beginningless time. So, that's what that, the meaning of that is. Since beginningless time, I have been in cyclic existence and suffered for many unnecessary reasons, uh, is what it's basically saying. Um, and that um, I have this, this continuum um, has always been my continuum, just as a mango tree has always been in the continuum of a mango tree. Um, it's never was a peach tree one time. Uh, throughout its existences, um, as this mango tree it didn't produce peaches for a season and then go back to mangoes. It's always been a, a mango tree. Likewise, this continuum we've had since beginningless time has been our continuum since beginningless time, uh, doing virtuous things and non virtuous things. <laughs> Pardonnez-vous, Dunga Yayam Kalimamujasavares 
Doente lá no Zoba do Concurso. Sim, já me ajuda. Zoba do Concurso. Tem na A. Doente e oito anos. Quando eu estava chá e oito anos, né? Zan que leva... Leva a minha doente a dor. Né? Sem ponto a tiba chá hoje. Tem na doente e oito anos. E né? Quando eu estava... Quando eu estava... Quando eu estava... Shayuba, Dagi Lebanya was doing that, doing your own, as well. Doing a vision to the Tabisan town to what Shedagi, not so many, you then Shedagi, Tayutan and Hibble Lambas, Tanjuji Melusum, she was a pinch of rest. Tena doing a vision. The Tabisha, Yuba Ness, doing a vision to a Nanjuk Samba Gua, Sanjuk Sanguia. Tony, what an answer, my dear Mado, and Cato Cangatur, what are you about there? You about there, Dagi, Lebanyeva, and then I saw what the Lebanyeva is. Tay, Pansuso, and Yeva, Shedagi Aboris, near to Nyado Saint Ponto, I give us ours, Sancho Chaju, Mare, Saint Sancho Chavija, what is Jeber Shaw. J'ai And Dungan Tomala Saint Zuba Nam Sala Kaji Majibi Majiba Jiba Shaos Majiba Jiba Shaos. What that in the Matasun to do, Jaya, Shining Abbey Lunes, Shining Abbey Lunes, then maybe Leng Abbey. Don't just want to chomp us, Shiribi, Shiribi Bajan or Tayudor, and don't just want to call it Tuna and Debatan. Don't just want to chomp at us, less a Mangatemba Mangatemba Shujil Majatan, Tuluman Yamak Siguro, less a what did it take in a debatan? It is Tonson, Shiribi Pashan Lure, what they were there. Mangatemba, Mangatemba Suji, Kachi Zobasheba, what the Okutang in Debatagres and Okutu Kachi Zobasheba is Zobasheba Tan. J'ai dit que je suis un peu de temps, 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 the data in the chishina the data in okay so now um, reflecting on the crucial benefits uh, as such as liberation etc reread the small part repeatedly make your mind steadfast thinking I know that in the past while passing through cyclic existence I suffered for the sake of trifling diseases desires and minor needs yet I disregarded the many sufferings undergoing a great deal of purposeless suffering that will in turn cause immeasurable suffering for me in my future lives. Given this, now that I know I am engaged in virtue that will accomplish immeasurable benefits and happiness for myself and others, it is appropriate that I accept suffering a trillion times more than before. So of course I will accept suffering smaller than that. Engaging in the Bodhisattva's deeds says, for the sake of my desires I have experienced being burned, etc., thousands of times in the hells, but have not achieved either my own welfare or the welfare of others. This is not as harmful as that, and it achieves great purpose, so it is correct here only to delight in suffering that clears away all beings hurt. Um, so engaging in the suffer accepting the suffering of the Dharma, engaging in the practice of uh, um, learning about emptiness, engaging in learning about bodhicitta and the desire to definitely emerge, renunciation, um, engaging in the, these learnings. And thus, after you reflect on how you have previously crea created only hardship uh, that did not accomplish any of your own or others' aims, uplift your, th your mind, thinking, 
why am I not now bearing a suffering that achieves great purpose? Um, so, okay, I didn't do all of these things before properly. Then why at this moment am I not trying to achieve great meaning for my life? Although I am suffering, how excellent that I have found something like this to do. Moreover, develop a fearless attitude towards hardship, thinking how you were misled by bad teachers to ignoble, purposeless uh, paths where you endured aesthetic practices such as leaping on a trident, sitting close to five fires, and the like. And we see this in the actual tenet systems where they study into non-Buddhist tenets. Um, and there were religions of the past where they said... Um, uh, uh, if I move out of direct translations of Rinpoche's, I apologize. So there'll be a slight translator's note um, in here just about the meaning of these. So there are tenet systems in non-Buddhist schools that believe that enduring suffering is the way to liberation. So they set, sit under the hot sun and set fires all around them and endure the heat. And they believe that this is a way to get rid of their affliction. So they eat dirty, the worst of the, the rice or the worst of the food because they believe that this is somehow penance or enduring uh, will get rid of their afflictions. Um, and then there's also a school that believes that if you jump on a trident and if the trident goes just perfectly uh, through, I don't know, uh, this... Uh, through the center of your chest in a specific way, then you're liberated. Um, so um, there's a school of people that jump literally and kill themselves, impale themselves on tridents um, in order to achieve this perfect uh, puncture, which they believe allows them to be liberated. Um, so we these are actual tenet systems of belief that you can see in ancient traditions. Um, so um, it's saying that uh, if you... Um, were fearless in the past to do all of these things, certainly you should be able to endure practice in the context of what was being asked here. Um, if you were willing to jump on a trident uh, in order to be liberated in the past without fear, uh, why would you not uh, be able to handle, um, remain fearless in, when you're not being praised? Um, okay. Moreover, develop a fearless attitude towards hardship, thinking how you were misled by bad teachers to ignoble, purposeless paths where you endured aesthetic practices such as leaping on a trident, sitting close to five fires, and the like. And also here, the main point is purposeless paths. You can spend an entire lifetime engaging in a practice that isn't jumping on a trident, but is purposeless because it's an incorrect path. Um, so you've had patience with that. Also, think how for the sake of inferior mundane purposes you made yourself bear many sufferings in farming, business, and war. Um, so the different categories of life outside of practice and think of the hardships that one has had to endure for business sake uh, and, and the like. That's the karma you're Yeah. The tr yeah, yeah, okay. Chishena sarpa gutso dutsu yomare. Okay, yeah. Then triwa, then hua. Okay. Okay, so I don't think we have time to get started in a new section. We only have five minutes left. Uh, if someone has a question, we can entertain that, or we'll just do the uh, concluding prayer. Col Coleman? Yeah. Um, so this is just about what you just said about the leaping on the trident. Was that considered being a sin of... Um Killing yourself, or no? It's this is a non-Buddhist school. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have anything to do with Buddhism. Mm -hmm. It was an ancient belief in India, and they believed that they became enlightened by impaling, impaling themselves. themselves. That's it. Okay. That's the whole story. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, so we'll do the concluding hua, uh, dedication and prayer. Kongi Triwa, the the don som. The shigo, the the. Kon sampa nampa de kelen na de nampa yomari. Anje gumasu. Okay. Concluding mandal offering and dedication prayer. The fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. I dedicate whatever virtues I have collected for the benefit of the teachings and of all sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lozandrapa to shine forever. 
I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. I dedicate all this virtue to emulate the knowledge of the hero Manjushri and likewise Samantabhadra as well. With whatever dedication is praised as supreme, conquerors traversed the three times, I also dedicate all my roots of virtue for the sake of auspicious deeds. In that pure land, surrounded by snowy mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness. All powerful Avogateshvara attends in Yatso, may you stay until samsara's end. I pray for the long life of the precious Kensar Wandak, upholder of scriptural and realizational doctrines, a spiritual friend who trained extensively in the five great philosophical texts with exceptional wisdom and perseverance. <laughs>